why did it become like this? For the first time being such a non-existent North Star, we have such a bunch of naughty brothers again. Two unfortunate events overlap, and these two misfortunes bring me more misfortune. I should have spared my life but why did it become like this I'm not really humble, why don't you hire someone else? You said I was a star god or something, why was I pushed to the position of heavenly emperor? But Vishnu, the great god, approached me and said that the thunder god Indra had stopped working. The three kingdoms god had already studied and decided that you would be the next Indra. I, who traveled through Indian mythology in chapter 1, was only a child born six days ago. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. The world is vast, bordered by the north by Lujo, and a wilderness of hope. Seven million years after the opening of heaven and earth. This is a vast wilderness, desolate and open. The sneaky monster in the bushes suddenly pounced and grabbed a solitary figure. Like a bird catching a fish, throwing it in the air and swallowing it with its mouth open. That person only has two calves left to kick outside. Aliva. Don't do this, okay? A helpless voice emanated from the monster's mouth. Immediately after, a handsome young man with a thin and weak arm opened the monster's mouth and jumped onto its back. You're already 200,000 years old, don't be so childish anymore. The young man fiercely patted the towering head of the monster under the seat. Compared to the monster's massive body, this handsome young man is like a baby. But the monster reflexively shrunk its neck under that slap. The young man sighed and felt his body. At the moment of this sentence, his strength increased by two tons. Too slow, sighed the young man. We only added hundreds of thousands of tons of power today, it's too slow. Too few. Master Tulu. Please don't hit me on the head, you're going to fool me. The beaten monster interrupted his contemplation. It straightened up in anger, with its front hooves akimbo, shaking its back, and uttering clear words from its mouth. It's more polite to call this monster him. As the monster stood up, what appeared in front of him was a half-horse and half-bird monster, with a body larger than an elephant. The overall image of the monster is a black steed. But the mouth is like the beak of a falcon, the back of the horse is fluttering with two huge bat wings, and the tail is like an elongated blunt mace. It stretched lazily in place, like a stretched cat. With just this moment, the saws of the six horse legs let out a clanging sound, and their sharp claws, shining with steel luster, effortlessly crushed the stones on the ground. The bat wings on the back were originally like steel plates, but now there are also many slender willow scales standing up, trembling and emitting a crisp ding sound of steel collision. Showcasing a ghostly pattern. You're already a fool. How could you be so foolish? The youth, also known as Tolupo, cursed angrily. However, before the curse could end, the monster under his crotch suddenly pouted on the ground and dug a hole in the ground. Master, we must be careful not to be seen by those monsters. Are you stupid? You're just a monster. And you're also the former king of monsters. Tolupo, who had been covered in sand, clenched her fist. I'm the king of monsters, that's right, but there's also Pony. What if we get caught by Pony? Aliva covered his head with his two front feet and kept moaning. Boney, the most powerful demon king, has forced all beings in the world to hide everywhere now. Being devoured by them will entangle one's career, without enough strength to break free, without even the opportunity for reincarnation. Not to mention that Pony is currently fighting against all the masters, do you have time to catch us two little shrimp? Also, do you see that Pony can't run? When he saw that all his brothers had mounts, he somehow fell for this fool. Tolupo couldn't figure out how the demon king, who had eyes on his head and was the second in command of the Brahma, had fallen to this point. Master, let's quickly find Lord Ajani. If we don't find him again, there will be more and more monsters, and this world will be over. The Mount Aliva only discovered the dirt all over his owner's body and abruptly changed the topic. Listening to the words of the Mount Aliva, Tarupa finally stopped. 
because it is right, monsters will become more and more over time, until all the masters cannot resist them. Yeah. The world is also about to end. Looking at the constantly flashing plus one attribute points in front of her, Duroba repeated to herself. If no more sacrifices are held, the gods can hide. But this world is expected to fall into destruction shortly after its birth. And do you still have a chance then? Plus one, plus one, plus one. Add 100 kilograms of strength. Add 100 kilograms of strength. Add 100 kilograms of strength. The numbers are constantly popping out. Tolupo felt that as the numbers jumped out, his body was constantly strengthening. Although the reinforcement brought by this number is not even a drop in the ocean compared to the strength of his body itself. This should be considered his cheating golden finger. Devote oneself to an imperceptible place, where there is a radiance and splendor. Among them, the three rings of gold, silver, and black interweave with each other. Together they form a spherical shape, and in the middle of this sphere, countless streams of light and dust are enveloped. The inexplicable incandescence, deep blue, pale blue, and countless other colors are circulating. The subtle, melodious, winding, and countless other sounds of the unknown Tao are ringing. This is what brought me to this world, but it is no longer the same as when I first bought it. Now it is sacred, majestic, and cannot be viewed directly. Those three circles are like the heavenly way, running a mysterious trajectory full of charm. The flowing light seems to be able to break free from a beam and break through the world, while the tiny dust can become an ancient star just by scattering one. This is his harvest of 500 Thai baht at a small stall during his trip to Thailand. According to the greasy vendor, speaking in his newly learned Mandarin, it was a local municipal project that dug up a temple and flowed out of it, bringing good luck and honor. Whether it can bring him good luck and honor goes without saying, but it has indeed reincarnated him into this world, bringing him 6,000 years of life. He now names it Ada Dot Ring. Because since his birth, this ring has been providing him with plus one physical strength every moment. However, no matter how much he invested, his mind was still at an unknown distance from it, never getting closer to it, let alone controlling it. Six thousand years of trying have tried countless ways, and almost all of his enthusiasm has been dampened. Now it is just a daily routine. No longer observing this mysterious treasure that was completely impossible to manipulate, the Drupo opened his eyes. With a movement in my heart, the numbers no longer jump out, but the sense of reinforcement is still constantly coming in. Just hiding the numbers, but the constant reinforcement that the treasure brings to oneself continues. The mind sank for a long time only in a moment, and the outside world was just a moment. He is currently in Indian mythology. A moment is a thought, twenty thoughts are a moment, twenty seconds are a pinky finger, twenty pinky fingers are a luoyu, twenty luoyu is a moment, thirty minutes is a day and night. Three hundred and sixty-five days and nights are one year, and a thousand years is just one day and night of the heavenly gods. So according to the concept of the heavenly god, he is just a baby born only six days ago. Keep going. As long as I live, I will definitely be invincible. Feeling the increase of hundreds of thousands of tons of power today, Tolupo secretly encouraged herself in her heart. He looked at the main task in the lower right corner. Main Mission Live Until Dawn Chapter 2 Only adding 480,000 tons of strength per day, I think Goldfinger is very reasonable. You are listening at NovelFull.audio is there only a lifespan of 4.3 billion years left? And then you have to face the world's catastrophe. Tuolupo has already experienced two types of dawn. At first, he experienced 30 seconds, which was one day and night, but the main task was not completed. Afterwards, he went through a thousand years, which was a day of God, and the task was not yet completed. So, there was only one last thing he hadn't seen yet, and that was the dawn when Brahma woke up. A thousand years for a mortal is equivalent to one day for a divine being, and twelve thousand years for a divine being is equivalent to one night for Brahma. One night, 
Brahma wakes up and floods the world, and the next day Brahma creates another world, which is called a calamity wave. Without becoming a god, the lifespan will not exceed 800 divine years, less than 300 million years. The god has a lifespan of 1000 to 16000 divine years, while the main god has a lifespan of more than one calamity. Even ordinary celestial beings with a lifespan of 16,000 years cannot resist the wave of calamity. Live until dawn, right. It's exactly what I want. Tolupo felt herself, although she was a god, she had not ascended to the throne, and in her current state, she could not see dawn. Only by ascending to the throne and becoming a celestial being, can one have the qualification to take a look at the dawn of Brahma. Although this artifact has sent over one trillion attribute points since its birth. But with just a few fingers, the time from when the great Brahman wakes up can only add attribute points of less than 8 million megabytes. According to my own experience, one attribute point only adds 100 kilograms of strength to an adult in a previous life. 8 million megabytes of attribute points adds 800,000 megatons of strength. It is equivalent to being able to carry one thousandth of the earth in one's previous life. As the day passed, I only gained 480,000 tons of strength from my past life. Tolupo let out a sigh of disgust. Ah, the golden finger is weak, the passerby sighs. It seems that we still need to continue developing the golden finger. I don't know what it will bring me when I can touch it. But now, he can't care about these anymore. Because previously, there was a small issue that needed to be resolved. For example, this world is about to be destroyed by monsters. The world has waited for less than 4.3 billion years for Brahma to come and take action, and now it is already in danger. Tolupo is the younger brother of the fire god, but the fire god Agni fled before the ceremony to save the world. He came out to find the fire god and go back to save the world. Let's quickly find someone. I don't know where my elder brother is hiding. Looking at the star hanging high in the sky, it had become dim, and Tolupo was also a bit anxious. He looked around for a moment, thought for a moment, and decided to take some risks. He spoke to Aliva and ordered. In a moment, I will use my divine power to search around. If any monsters come, you can resist them and wake me up when you see a big monster among them. Master, just rest assured. Even the big monsters, let alone the small ones, I can swallow them. If it weren't for Boney, Dashiyu and other guys coming over, I wouldn't be afraid. Aliva instantly regained confidence and flapped his wings in place. Ignoring it, Tolupo simply piled up an altar in front of him. A pile of fragrant wood was built into a high platform, then butter was poured on, and a black stone, fur, and wooden stick were taken out, ready to start summoning. Just as I wrapped the wooden stick in fur and placed it on the stone, I suddenly patted my forehead and realized that this method was no longer effective. He could only extend one finger and use his divine power to transform it into a white light and throw it into it. White light covered it, and the fragrant wood burst into flames, but the flame grew weaker and was about to extinguish. This is the current situation. As the fire god closed his connection with the world and hid, the flames in this world gradually extinguished, and friction was no longer a way to start a fire. Only the gods can generate flames and sustain them with their own power. It's still too forced. It's not as easy as the thunder and lightning of the Buddha, and it's still too difficult to convert flames with star power. With a helpless sigh, Tolupo could only continuously increase her investment in divine power. As the fragrant wood burned, the butter placed on it began to melt, and with the fragrant wood, cigarettes drifted deep into the darkness. Cigarettes are like a spiritual snake, seeming to want to swim from the air to a certain location, which should be where Agni is hiding. Even if the Agni hides, as the object of worship, the desire and incense generated will still search for the location of the object. Apart from the relatively small scope of searching for this thing, it is much more accurate than finding it herself. The cigarette swayed, accompanied by beads of sweat dripping from his forehead. He opened his throat and shouted in a distant voice. 
Agni. Agni. Although Agni did not respond, with the call of the Dharma Buddha, the great star in the sky shone brightly, casting countless rays of light onto the earth. The light scattered on the earth, seemingly searching for something, and all the dark caves and holes in the crust were illuminated by this light. In response, these places also lit up with a pair of red, glowing bloodthirsty eyes. Ow! The roar of the beasts sounded, and countless strange things crawled out of their burrows, jumped down from the mountains, and even took off from the sky. They roared and writhed, following the mysterious induction towards a wilderness. This is the monster. Just like the shapes of children's graffiti are all high.end goods with qualified shapes, like the ink and wash blooming are all artistic. Most of them are not formed, some are like a piece of rag soaked in water for an unknown amount of time, and some are like a circular smear of nasal mucus. How terrifying, how ugly. Fortunately, I have already been cleansed by the Master's divine power. Aliva used to be a demon, but his father, who was entangled with his body, subdued him and gave him a gift. Looking at the monster that covered the sky and almost pressed over like a lid, Aliva let out a strange cry. Looking back at the owner who was still maintaining the ceremony, he could only bury his head and rush forward. Gaga. A group of kids, come and experience the power of the demon king. With a roar, Aliva's body bulged and instantly swelled into a huge monster measuring 150,000 yodons, length units, about 10 kilometers per yodons, or more than 10,000 meters. He emitted a hazy white radiance on his body, burning the oncoming monsters into smoke. But as more and more monsters came up, the light on his body dimmed and he could only do his best to maintain the altar beneath him. Watching some large monsters with physical forms gather around the monsters, Oliva's scales tremble, and countless scales transform into bows and arrows, shooting towards the sky filled with monsters. At that moment, the surrounding monsters were empty, but then more monsters from afar came crashing in. The monsters that fell to the ground did not die either. They turned into a pool of black mud, rolling and trying to regroup. But the small arrows formed by the scales were firmly holding them back from escaping. Master, I can't withstand it anymore. Aliva shouted and saw that Taruba had not turned back yet. Anger flashed in his eyes, and he opened his huge mouth and took a deep breath. With this breath, he devoured countless monsters around him, and Aliva's body instantly expanded by hundreds of tenths. But it was accompanied by a slight redness in his originally dark eyes. My eyes were hazy, as if I had just eaten a delicious mushroom, and my mouth unconsciously became bigger and bigger, with saliva flowing out. Let's go. Tolupo originally wanted to continue maintaining the altar, but when he saw Aliva's eyes changing color, he immediately stopped the worship. Following the last direction pointed out before the cigarette dissipated, Tolupo's body trembled and transformed into a giant of 100,000 years tall. She mounted a strange horse and charged outward. On this land, a giant horse trampled on the plains and rivers, carrying a giant with three heads and eight arms flying towards the sky. The strange horse spewed out red light and black smoke from its mouth, while the giant's three heads stared around, with eight arms holding spoons, whips, shields, long maces, umbrellas, bowls, turtle shells, and ropes. Surrounding them were countless bizarre monsters, spewing black poisonous water from their mouths. However, the giant held a large umbrella that covered the sky and emitted a glow. With a wave of it, countless monsters were beaten to ashes and left like this. Monsters, heavenly horses, giant gods, black rain, fireworks, giant umbrellas, the dark world, and the illuminated bosu. This magnificent scene is enough to be depicted in the murals of every temple that worships him. Enough to be recorded and sung by Brahmin priests until the moment of world destruction. But at this moment, Tolupo was just running away. He didn't think about how great he was, he just ran aimlessly, just like wandering aimlessly in this world. According to the world, he has gone through 6,000 human years. For the past 6,000 years, his daily activities were nothing more than food, play, and listening to singing and praising poetry, 
as if the long time was about to erase the little thing he cherished in his memory. Unlike this desolate and boundless world, he once lived in a small world filled with people, repeating strange things back and forth every day, and then welcoming new ones and seeing off old ones. Those brief, ordinary, precious things with laughter, sadness, gains, and losses. First Disaster Monsters Start A voice that I don't know how to describe suddenly came from deep in my heart. At this moment, facing the chasing monsters, he suddenly burst out laughing. The laughter shook the monsters and amazed the dark horse under their crotch. But he seemed to suddenly come back to life in the fear of death, remembering those already blurred memories. Wrap those things in your heart like lotus flowers, then nurture them, wrap them on the lotus platform into lotus seeds, until one day they will take root and sprout again. He waved his weapons wildly, his uncontrollable black hair fluttering like a snake. He laughed wildly and opened his mouth, making a declaration to heaven and earth. I am the Lord of the North Star, Tulupa. The North Star, Purple Micro. In a certain world, Tulupo can also be called the Great Emperor of Zhongtian Arctic Seaway. Chapter 3 Brahma's Reflection on Creating the World You are listening at NovelFull.audio On a riverbank, Tulupo was staring at this place in a daze. After his golden finger made a sound, there was no further reaction. If it weren't for the divine memory, it wouldn't have been possible for him to suspect that he had hallucinations. Forget it, I guess it's also related to monsters and has the same purpose as myself. He felt relieved in his heart, and six thousand years of research had already calmed his mind. He wouldn't be surprised if this thing turned into a person and appeared in front of him tomorrow. Since it's a robbery, then crossing him naturally knows what the consequences are. No longer entangled, Tolupo looked at the broad river that traversed heaven and earth in front of him. It doesn't know where it came from, nor does it know where it will go. It traverses through it, dividing the world into two. According to the guidelines, Agni should be here. Looking at the big river in front of her, Tolupo frowned slightly. This river is too long and too big. If Agni doesn't appear, I don't know when I will be able to find him. I can afford to wait for myself, but many people in this world cannot afford to wait. If we let monsters continue to breed, the beings without divine power will be finished. It is said that Brahma, another term for Brahma, usually used by close people, has already hidden into the chaos beyond the heavens. Except for the joint sacrifices of the fire god Agni, the water god Faluna, and the wind god Faluyu that he could perceive, the rest could only rely on those two great gods. Even so, this requires them to lower the heads of their Brahma sons. God, please save us. A hoarse voice suddenly rang out, scaring Tulupo to take a few steps back from the riverbank. Looking back, I saw a strange thing lying on the riverbank, talking to him like a stranded fish. No, this is a stranded fish. The upper body is adult-shaped but flat, with hair sliding off the back revealing scaly skin, and that suddenly breaking open the wide fish tail that splashed on the water surface. After staring cautiously for a while, Tolupo asked, Who are you? Before leaving, he had already heard from his brothers that the world is now full of various monsters. Going out is different from being in Mount Ghana. Be careful and run away when you see something wrong. It's okay if you can't find Agni. They heard from their parents that there are also two great gods who can go to chaos. They will go and inquire where the two great gods live and request them to search for Brahma. Great God! I can see your radiance from afar, I beg you to save us. The fish monster snorted a few times, pleading in a more painful voice. Seemingly aware of Tolupa's suspicion, he spoke up and explained. We are the fish spirits created by the great immortal and the birth lord Gaibo. We have been living with our people in the Puga River until our residence was taken by a red demon. Please save us. Speaking of later, tears flowed from his motionless fish eyes, which fell to the ground and solidified into pearl-like particles. Apart from being ugly, just like a beautiful creature in his memory, the mermaid. 
Tolupo was originally feeling embarrassed. Giebo was his father, and considering this fish man as his brother, he almost knocked him down just now. At this moment, hearing him say the red demon, I couldn't sit still immediately. What does that red demon look like? When did he come? Continuous questioning emanated from him, even grabbing the fisherman onto the riverbank. Ah! The fisherman let out a scream, looked up in fear, and found a face staring at him. He struggled and thumped hard, but was restrained by something and unable to move. Don't be afraid, I just want to inquire about that demon. Perhaps I can help you catch that demon, Tolupa explained as she spread out her hands and thought for a moment before adding the fishman's eyes were fixed on him, and he began to jingle and drop pearls. Thank you, the demon is red all over, with three heads, three legs, and seven arms, gripping many strange things. Does it look like this? Tolupo suddenly interrupted him and asked, her body trembling with excitement as she spoke. As his body trembled, the young man in place disappeared, and in the light and shadow, Tulu transformed into his true body. After some thought, he put down one arm and transformed his magical tool into a spear, fan, cup, spoon, dagger, lotus, and divine axe. After the change was completed, he looked at Aliva beside him with some disdain, but unfortunately he couldn't turn into a goat. The dark horse looked at its owner with a questioning expression on its face. Is it like this, right? There was no response in front of me for a while. Tolupo walked over and asked the fisherman. At this moment, he realized that the fisherman had somehow stopped moving, with only a pair of eyes still wide open. Is he dead or alive? Oh, it seems that this fish doesn't even close its eyes. Tulupo quickly inquired and found that although her eyes were wide open, fortunately she only fainted. Brother. You come out. Confirming that the person he was looking for was in the river, he arrived at the riverbank and pulled out his whip. He reached into the empty fisherman's palace in the water and stirred it up vigorously. The whip is like a spirit snake, sniffing every inch of space. Don't hide, if you don't come out again, the monsters will kill all the beings on the ground. Without the beings, the monsters will also destroy the gods, and this world will be destroyed. When Brahma returns from chaos and sees the destroyed world, he may recreate everything and have a north star appear again, but he dare not bet that it will still be himself. The original world was a void and chaos, and chaos lasted for an unknown amount of time. In countless coincidences, a certain cognition between existence and non-existence was born in the void. This cognition can be called spirit or Brahma. The Supreme Spirit generates existence from nothingness. The Supreme Spirit first collects certain flowing things in chaos, which it calls water, and then places a seed in the water. This seed generates an egg in the water, which is golden and shining like a dazzling sun. The Supreme Spirit Brahma descended its spirit and appeared in the golden egg in the form of the God of creation, Brahma. Brahma lived alone in the golden egg, pondering the initial ultimate problem, and spent a long time beyond imagination in his contemplation. When he began to be curious about the outside of the golden egg, the creator god Brahma used the power of his thoughts to divide the golden egg in half. The upper half becomes the sky, and the lower half becomes the earth. In order to separate heaven and earth from aggregation, Brahma arranged the atmosphere between them and determined the four directions of southeast, northwest, and northwest by himself. He created the division of time and space, and thus the universe was formed. Next, wisdom, consciousness, and sensation were born in sequence, and then, the five major elements that make up matter also emerged. The first element born is emptiness, which resides in the center and its attribute is sound. After the emptiness, there is a wind that flows through the air, and its attribute is to strike harmony. After the wind, fire is born, which is light. Fire illuminates the world, and its properties are one more color than the wind. Next is water, which moistens all things. Its properties include touch, color, sound, and taste. The last born is the earth, which carries everything. 
Its attributes are touch, color, sound, taste, and fragrance. Then the five elements of air, wind, fire, water, and earth are mixed together, and all things are formed by the rhythm of the heart. All forms of matter are composed of the five major elements, and the viewer who loses their heart will also decompose back into the five major elements when destroyed. Rivers, lakes, seas, mountains, hills, and fields appear on the earth, all formed by the five major elements. Then, the gods were born, and they were all sons born from Brahma. After Brahma created heaven and earth, he gave birth to Mori from his soul, Alichuo was born from the eyes, Uankaluo was born from the mouth, Buluosadia was born from the right ear, Buluok was born from the left ear, and Jialuotu was born from the nostril. Later, the Dasha he gave birth to created all things. However, due to a prank by his youngest son, the love god Gamma, who was born in his heart, Brahma ran into the chaos. Now, the monsters in this world are starting to become active, and the world is about to be destroyed. Chapter 4 My brother, the god of fire, Agni, is extremely afraid of death. You are listening at NovelFull.audio in the midst of the earth-shattering actions of Tuolupo, comparable to those of Sun Monkey in Neza stirring the Dragon Palace, the underwater finally had a response. I won't come out. If I come out and you let me worship, I will disappear. A dull voice came from deep underwater. Upon hearing this voice, Tuolupo was overjoyed. The fisherman did not lie and finally found a genie. Now that's how we brought him back. Thinking of this, Tolupo's voice became gentle, like coaxing a child. He comforted him softly. No, brother. It's just that we need you to light the sacrificial fire. There won't be anything wrong. As Tolupo spoke, her eyes quietly emitted a golden light. While listening and watching, try to extend the whip and capture the location where the fire god is hiding. The head of the whip had already split apart like a hundred giant snakes sniffing the scent, and the tail of the giant snake was held in the hand of Toru. Unfortunately, the odor in the water cannot be found. Don't lie to me. Agni's voice became sharper, with a hint of crying. I have seen those people worship me, and they use fragrant wood and butter for their worship. You let me go to worship, aren't I like firewood and butter? In the end, like wood and butter, I turn into a pile of ashes and smoke. Tolupo continued searching silently, not knowing what a genie was thinking, and could think of it here. He is not familiar with the details of Indian mythology, but has only seen the four-faced Buddha during his travels. The tour guide introduced him as the creator god of India. Although I don't know what kind of mythology I am in, I don't expect to kill my nobles like the Mayans to please my ancestors. As a god, I would never sacrifice him. A fire god is only used to summon my great-grandfather once. If that's the case, Brahma will run through chaos a few more times. Although his mother can give birth, how many fire gods need to be born? According to Agni, having one fire god at a time is not enough, there are also water god and wind god in the festival. Brahma ran through chaos four or five times, and his group of brothers was about to be annihilated. Agni, I thought to myself, you won't die. Tolupo had a sudden idea and came up with a statement. You are the god of fire. You are fire, not firewood and butter. Compared to you, brother Shuation Falu is more like butter, isn't brother Function Falu like the green smoke he produces? They're not afraid, what are you afraid of? Speaking of which, Tolupo is also a bit mesmerized. It seems that India also has some Mayan mythological elements. The more you say, the more terrifying it becomes. Quickly nod and let go of these wild thoughts. Fortunately, at this moment a genie seemed to be moved by his statement and began to ask. The fire will eventually go out. After the sacrifice is over, what should I do if the fire goes out? I don't want to die, that's why I ran out. Tulu, who was once again stumped by new questions, was speechless. Why are you still a child of several thousand years old, thinking so much? Look at Indra, 
he drinks and fights every day, doesn't think of anything, and is extremely happy. You see that the fire does not extinguish instantly after the sacrifice is completed, and there are still many charcoal fires left. I promise you to save your charcoal fires during the sacrifice and put them on your favorite tree, okay? You can be reborn again. The water remained silent, and Tolupo continued to speak up to persuade. Do you like the neem tree or the bodhi tree? Perhaps I can secretly break off a branch of the baresa tree. The fire you make will definitely be purple and blue, especially beautiful. A slight wave came from the bottom of the water, accompanied by the voice of Agni, you say. I caught you. Before he could ask any more questions, Tolupo let out a loud shout. The whip that sank in the water danced wildly, like hundreds of pythons pouncing, capturing a red figure in a hidden space in the river. Before the frowning and contemplative figure could react, hundreds of pythons crisscrossed and swept through the space around him, then collapsed into a net and wrapped him in a ball. Get up! With the force in his hand, the whip, which had been extended for an unknown length, quickly shortened and pulled the thing wrapped at the tail back onto the table. Then they merged with each other, becoming only a few forks, interspersed to tightly bind him. On the riverbank, there fell a beautiful young man with red hair and light red eyebrows, who looked only thirteen or fourteen years old. His facial features were harmonious and beautiful, and his exposed skin was like a pale red warm jade, emitting a faint glow. Although it had an aggressive red color, it was disrupted by his melancholic temperament. Especially with a pair of warm red eyes, filled with contemplation and confusion, it seems that the spirit is still in another dimension without returning. Tolu, why are you tying me up? As he looked up at the young man who was still staring at him in confusion, Tolu put glared at him with anger. Keep your questions and ask Kayabo's father. He can answer you. Kayabo, now the father of more than thirty deities in Mount Ghana, is also the father of Tarupa and Ajini. Brahma. Maritsu. Kasayapa. Drupa. Or it could be Brahma, Dasha, Aditi, or Dharma. Yes, Kasayapa married his cousin and gave birth to many gods. Speaking of which, although he is the youngest younger brother, Tolupo's appearance is much more mature than his group of older brothers and sisters, looking at seventeen or eighteen years old. Perhaps it is due to the change in appearance caused by psychological age. His newly troubled ninth grandpa is only six or seven years old. But didn't Kayabo's father run to Jingxiu Forest? He's not on Mount Ghana. And his Maya surpasses me too much, even in front of me, I can't recognize him. Agni lifted his head and spoke with some grievances. He really enjoys being with his father because his philosophy can always inspire him, but he often can't find anyone. Brahma created the world and gave birth to ten sons, who then created all things. Kasayapa, as the son of Brahma's eldest son Maritsu, was the third generation of life. But his Maya power is extraordinary and can be said to be one of the few masters in the current world, and many even assume that his strength has surpassed many second-generation uncles. Below Brahma, although there are more than ten people in the second generation, there are still some deities that are not included in the calculation, or gods created naturally. But listing the seven great masters who created the world, there must be a place for Kasyapa, who is still ranked very high. Kasyapa's favorite thing to do is to transform into cows, sheep, chickens, dogs, flowers, plants, and trees, and often immerse himself in them after the change, unaware of the passage of time and external changes. If you sit on him or trample on him, he can also treat it as if nothing happened. But when it comes to this father, Tolupo doesn't know how to evaluate it. It's okay, you'll see him soon. Because another ant has reached adulthood. Chapter 5 Fire God's Curse on Fish You are listening at NovelFull.audio Kayabo has married five sisters consecutively, and now the sixth sister has grown up. He will hold the bar mitzvah immediately, and he will surely come here. Just as the two brothers were talking, with a thud, a goat broke through the river and leaped in front of the tolupo. 
This goat has a huge body size, with smooth and powerful lines all over its body, and is exactly the Mount of Agni. Bah! The goat looked up at him and let out a pleasing cry. Tolupo raised his whip, thought for a moment, and threw a genie onto the back of the goat. Go, carry your master on your back, let's go back. Speaking so, the whip in his hand still did not let go of Agni, and he also tied a knot on the sheep's horn. He needs to hurry back to Mount Ghana and can't let him run anymore. Not to mention anything else, the first thing to do is to let Azini spread his divinity, otherwise there would be no fire in the world and all beings would not be able to live. If the god of fire had not been born, it would have been okay. The primordial fire was enough to protect the world. But with the arrival of the corresponding heavenly gods, the original elements have either lurked underground that cannot be excavated, or wandered to the high sky that cannot be reached. Agni sealed off his divinity, and flames also sealed off his spirituality. The difficulty of obtaining fire for life in the world directly escalated wildly. Fortunately, there is no weakness in life at this time, and one can survive without eating or drinking for hundreds or thousands of years. It's just that without flame protection, relying solely on starlight is easy to be attacked by monsters and the like. When Brahma created the world with his thoughts, his absurd thoughts also flew out and attached themselves to the dirt of his body, giving birth to monsters. The initial monsters only lived in some hidden dens and corners. But as Brahma left chaos, these monsters began to multiply wildly, and they devoured each other, giving birth to several powerful monsters. Now Dashiyu is splitting on the water surface, and Brahma has created countless underground caves on the earth. There is also the most terrifying demon king, Pony, who possesses wisdom. He can absorb all the power in the world to strengthen himself, except for the birth master, the general divine power will be assimilated and distorted by him. Even his grandfather Dasha asserted that by allowing him to develop, he could draw the power of a clean world in this way, until it was dragged into destruction. Sacrifice must be carried out now, otherwise if the monsters continue to multiply, everyone will be finished. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You bring peace to the world in the water. You have bound the red demon. The fishman, who relied on the advantage of his eyes and no one noticed him even when he woke up, suddenly heard a strange tone in his voice. Looking back at the fish man who had already woken up at some unknown time, he was making various strange movements on the riverbank. Accompanied by singing praises loudly and thanking herself, Tolupo just wanted to cover her face and leave quickly. When he didn't find the fire god, he was not afraid, but at that moment, he really became afraid. Imagine the scene on the earth in the future. Countless strange fish growers knew their names, singing hoarse and mournful praises, and then simultaneously performing strange movements. He shuddered with fear. And this scene will be spread everywhere by the elder brother who wanders around every day, Feng Shen Fau. Thinking that I would be ridiculed by the gods every day, especially because of the smile on the face of Durana, who could grin and pull the corner of his mouth to his ear. He could hardly resist wielding his long mace to kill the fish and silence them. No, we can't leave like this. They have already seen their face and need to find a way. Tuolu's heart twitched and he pointed his finger on the head of this fish man. The power of Maya was activated, and the fish man fell into a momentary daze. During this period, Turu quickly took out the white umbrella in his hand and pressed it against his head. Then he turned the whip into a rope and tied a unique knot on it. The fisherman shook his eyes and regained consciousness. What he saw was a yellow-skinned person wearing a golden armor, with an umbrella-shaped golden crown on his head, holding a snake-skin lasso rope in his hand, with the red demon's heavenly god bound to it. He looked at him with love, and a beautiful holy sound came from his mouth. My name is Faluna, and I am also the son of Kasyapa. We are brothers, so there is no need to be grateful for rescuing our brothers. Just remember my name and do not promote it. After speaking, the loving deity waved his hand and slowly walked away. I must inform every tribe in the water of God's name and taboo. 
The great God took the water away when it was about to be baked dry by a demon, extinguishing his flames. The fish man watched with admiration as the figure rose into the sky, gradually disappearing and making a vow in his heart. And here, Tolupo has already moved away from the river, and the two are heading towards Mount Ghana. At this moment, a genie on the goat's back seemed to wake up from contemplation. He struggled for a while, but couldn't break free from the whip. Brother, please let me go. I don't want to die, I won't go to Mount Ghana. He first begged for mercy to Tolu for a while. Faced with the iron-hearted nature of the Tolupo and ignoring him, a genie wept and howled on the back of the sheep like a small beast bound and about to be slaughtered. Knowing he couldn't run and face death, he looked at the river that was about to disappear and cursed the fish in the water. I curse, curse you whistleblowers, ignorant of the value of silence and foolishness. From now on, all life in the water will be roasted by my flames until it emits an irresistible aroma even more beautiful than grains, becoming a cooked food that is then divided and falls into others' stomachs. Agni, feeling dizzy, forgot that it was the heat on his body that frightened the life in the water, and then informed the fisherman, who had led to the arrival of the drupa. He just turned his despair and fear into a curse, with a mentality of dragging a cushion on his deathbed. Agni! Tulupo exclaimed in surprise and hurriedly went to cover his mouth. But it's already late, the curse has been issued. And among the knowledge obtained by Tulupo, there is a common sense belonging to the gods. Blessings and curses, once issued, cannot be terminated or interrupted, and can only be weakened or covered by other means. This world has just been created, and many lives are still in their original or primitive form. But their wisdom is not low. They have thinking, share the same joys and sorrows, are sentient beings, and can all be called human beings. Birdman, snake man, fish man, insect man, including divine man. In today's world, sentient beings may live comfortably, but they also have to eat. Some tigers and wolves like to eat grass, some snakes and insects like to eat grains, and some like to drink milk, but he has never seen anyone who eats meat and blood. As the curse of Agni emanates, various life forms with emotions in the water will be easily harmed upon encountering fire and then swallowed by other life forms. Immediately, all living beings in this world should regard all life in the water as delicious food, regardless of whether they have wisdom and emotions. Agni. You won't die, the fish didn't harm you, stop cursing. Tolupo begged anxiously. Although this world may be a bit boring, for thousands of years, the various grains and milk on the earth have been enough to satisfy everyone. He has become somewhat accustomed to this kind of life and has never felt anything wrong. At this moment, he suddenly heard the curse, which reminded him of something. It was then that he remembered the normal world of life cannibalism and the scenes he might see. Beasts and cows and sheep are all in the same place, and the scene of cows and sheep feeding the beasts with milk is nowhere to be seen, gentle or strangely shaped lives cuddle together, and the scene of sleeping together cannot be seen. At this moment, Agni seemed to have realized that even if he died, he should not have placed such a terrible curse on other beings. It's too late, he spoke with a crying tone and some fear. Quick, add a few more words. Tolu quickly called out to him. All spiritual beings are inedible. All spiritual beings are inedible. Agni's face turned red into charcoal, and sparks popped out of his seven orifices. He quickly followed suit and shouted. Looking at the expectant Tolupo, he nodded with a heavy expression and said, I don't know if this sentence has any effect. Feel it in place, but feel nothing. The curse had just been cast, and he couldn't compare an ordinary fish with a wise one. It's okay. Let's go back. Looking at the dejected Ajini, Tarupa could only sigh. Perhaps this box will eventually open. At this moment, a series of sound effects came to his mind. Ding! The event book is open and the metal system is enabled. Ding! Participated in the event, Curse of the Fire God, received AMP, hashtag, error. Log update, received legendary medal. 
Ding. The metal redemption system is open, and there is a database error. The redemption mall has failed to open. Tolupo quickly sank into her mind and saw a palm-sized metal floating in the void beneath the three rings, seemingly cast in bronze. There is a circle on the front of the bronze metal, inside which there is a twisted and jumping divine inscription, but unfortunately he cannot understand it. On the back of the metal is a deity with three heads and seven arms spewing flames, facing fish and other aquatic animals writhing in pain in the flames. It should represent the scene of Agni cursing the fish. System. No one responded. Maul. No one responded. This is not an interactive AI or tool, but a system that has not been explained and relies on it to trigger everything. Is that all? Tolupa didn't curse loudly. Since it couldn't be exchanged, what's the use of asking for this metal? What kind of broken system is this? Tolupo didn't know what happened after he left after shopping. Late at night, on that street, the crowd had completely dispersed. Kunba guessed, how much did you earn today? An old man asked the fat man next door in Thai. It's only over 2,000 baht today, the chubby man waved his hand and chuckled. 2,000. How did you do it? The old man's eyes widened. Can you tell me it's okay? No one buys my goods from temples or anywhere else. The old man sighed, looking very frustrated. He also set up a stall all day today, using language similar to that of a greasy fat man. Why can a fat man sell so much while he can only sell a few hundred baht? The fat man looked at him playfully without speaking. Thinking of this, the old man painfully withdrew five thousand Thai baht from his arms, gritted his teeth, and walked up to the fat man. Teach me, these five thousand are yours, and I promise not to sell things on that street in the future, I will go to other streets to find food. The chubby man thought for a long time before smiling and taking it down. Oh, butler, we have such a good relationship, there's no need for this. But he casually took the money and put it into his pocket. I'll tell you, you're not allowed to say anything, the fat man said mysteriously. I promise, I'll move out tomorrow. The old man raised his hand and swore. It's actually quite simple, it's because of an issue with our goods. Isn't all our goods fake? What's the problem? The old man couldn't figure it out anymore. Take out your goods. The old man obediently took out a statue from the cloth bag in front of him. The statue had a ferocious head, a crimson tongue, a ghostly face and painted body, and was extremely rough to the touch. The chubby man shook his head and handed the statue back. It seems that your statue was made by a small factory nearby. This is useless. Let me show you my statue. The fat man took out a beautiful and mysterious statue and shook it in front of the old man. The price for such a beautiful product is very expensive, isn't it? The old man hesitated a bit. The fat man rolled his eyes and lifted the statue to show him the bottom. Make in China. The fat man smiled proudly and said, Your things are rough and terrifying. Chinese people wouldn't like them. I brought these things from China. How many containers are there in a ship? They can crush all the small factories in Bangkok. The purchase price is very cheap. Moreover, Chinese people are so good that they understand our needs and make things that are both beautiful and safe. Who would buy something made by a small factory like you? If it is really dug out from a temple, it would be even worse. Some tourists who buy things indiscriminately are not without being entangled in dirty things. Finally, the fat man warned, when it comes to business, you need to have a conscience. You will move out tomorrow, right? The fat man turned around and looked at the old man. The old man pondered for a long time and nodded heavily. Chapter 6 Back to all sentient beings, Dalamo. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Mount Ghana is located in the northeast direction of the earth, like a large pillar standing on the ground. In this direction, the monsters were dispelled by the various masters, 
and Tulupo could unleash his divine power and move at full speed. I saw a faint golden light shining through the sky. The wind and air along the way did not move, and the golden light filtered through the space to the distant horizon. Unlike typical high dot speed movements that require overcoming the reaction forces of wind and earth, it also does not integrate into spatial jumps. The trajectory of Tarupa's movement can be seen vividly, but it has achieved teleportation for thousands of miles. This is the divine power he developed based on his past life legend, named Zongdi Jingguang. At this speed, but in a short time, the two of them descended to the foot of Mount Ghana. Countless clear springs flow on Mount Kana, with gold and gemstones covering the bottom of the stream, reflecting light in it. The mountain is covered with Mahabharata trees, Brahma trees, and Bodhi trees, and many beautiful birds and immortals sing on the trees. Because almost all the people living on the mountain are gods, and it is unknown how many great gods live in seclusion, as well as many of them being the elders of Tarupa and Ajini. So when Tolupo arrived at the foot of the mountain, he fell down and didn't forget to put his two mounts into the forest. He took a genie with him on foot up the mountain. Just as they entered the mountain gate, a group of handsome men and women dressed in light veils surrounded them. They didn't wear much clothing all over, just covering the key areas. Their exposed body lines were beautiful, their facial features were handsome and beautiful, and they emitted a faint glow. The gods playfully frolicked and frolicked as they approached, some jumping lightly like deer, some fluttering slightly on the ground, and some walking barefoot on the grass. They are Tuluva's brothers and sisters, and they are also the largest group of gods in the world today. Tolu, you're back. Isn't this a genie? How could you be willing to come back? Many brothers and sisters could not help laughing when they saw the two people, especially Akini, who had been tied up. However, Tualu reached out and stopped them, preventing them from pulling at Agni's hands and feet or twisting Agni's face. Brothers and sisters, I have found Brother Hushan. Please pass on the message. Other outgoing brothers, please stop searching and come back quickly. He is not the only one who goes out to search for the fire god. In the face of the evil spirits, in addition to these heartless brothers and sisters who stayed in Jinnah Mountain, the rest took part in the battle. The birth masters of your fathers and ancestors suppressed and destroyed monsters in various places, and the weak brothers and sisters guarded their homes or were guarded in Mount Kana. Brothers with stronger combat power inevitably rushed to various places, relying on their divine power and rituals to find people. The Creator refers to the Creator of all living beings, who are not afraid of the contamination of top-dot-level monsters. And the ones with strong combat power are their brothers who suffer from wind, rain, lightning, earth, water, and fire. Tulupo. Bring a genie over. Just when Tulupo was fighting against the tricks of these brothers and sisters with all her hands and feet, a majestic voice came. All of a sudden, the brothers and sisters in this circle seemed to meet the chicks of the eagle and ran away, leaving no one in the forest. Only the sound remains in place without dissipating. We've notified the other brothers. You go and visit Uncle Deramo. Tolupo just tidied up her clothes, withdrew her eight hands one by one, and put down the Ajini. I'm under a podi tree in front of you on the left, come over quickly. The sound came again. Upon hearing the voice, Tulupo felt a bit uneasy, and a genie almost hit his head in his neck, but he obediently walked over. Just because the one who spoke is a presence that almost everyone in the third and fourth generations of gods dare not confront. Tulupo took a genie and slowly walked to the bottom of a podi tree, bowing to a figure with their back to them in a proper manner. Have you met Uncle Deramo? The figure seemed to shake its head and then seemed to remain motionless. Agni, why are you avoiding the festival? His back did not turn, but his voice became heartless. The two of them buried their heads and dared not speak, but stood obediently. The figure didn't hear an answer and slowly opened an eye on the back of its head, releasing a divine light to calm the two, as if looking at them. The god of the born eyes behind this brain is Deramar, the god of justice. He is the eldest son of Athali, 
the second son born into the eyes of Brahma. As the source of the gods, Brahma was the first generation of gods. The ten children born to Brahma are the second generation gods, and the second generation god Maritsu is the eldest son. The gods born to the second generation of gods can be considered as the third generation of gods, so Daramoth is the eldest son of the three generations of gods and the first born third generation of gods. Their father Jiebo also wants to call out to his elder brother's god. Just like the strictest uncle in a family, Dalamo is like this. All along, he has been practicing hard under the tree or writing classic records. Only when a god does something wrong will he speak up. And now, it is clear that Agni has done something wrong. As for why he hasn't turned around, it's because as the god of justice slash god of righteousness, he is just like that. When measuring you with justice, always turn your back to all living beings to show no favoritism or favoritism. No matter who you are, it only depends on what you have done. From childhood to adulthood, it is said that none of the brothers have seen his face. Uncle Daramo, Agni was just momentarily scared. He has already returned. Why do you need to do this? Looking at the nervous Ajini, Tolupo took a step forward and blocked some of the divine light. Okay. Are you brothers going to provoke the righteous law? Daramo's tone was still very calm. But his reaction was not gentle at all. A large sword lying horizontally suddenly rose from the top of Dari's head, accompanied by a sense of shackles and constraints. Tulupo looked at the virtual shadow of the big sword in front of her, and a bitter feeling appeared in her heart. How could our brother Hida be? How could the sword of the righteous method have emerged? You should know that the last time I took out this sword, I held the object I wanted to chop, but it was Brahma. As the giant sword was raised, the two of them suddenly softened under the pressure of an imposing force, and they were about to kneel. Pop! At this moment, the unstoppable Tolupo pulled down a genie and both of them fell to the ground together. However, the two of them were lying on the ground in a four-legged position and did not kneel under the big sword. Tolupo continued to exert herself with both hands, as if she was still trying to prop herself up. The giant sword increased its pressure, and with a loud snap, Tolupo was thrown back. However, although he was thrown back to the ground, a cheerful smile appeared on his face. Just because he was halfway through, when he couldn't bear the pressure, he voluntarily collapsed, but it turned into a face-up, lying back position. Originally a failure, he lay at the feet of Dalamo. He looked up at the sky with a smile on his face, but instead became like mocking Dalamo. Watching the giant sword seem to be about to fall, Tolupo didn't worry at all. He blinked his eyes and suddenly opened his throat. Dad, help me. With this shout, the giant sword paused and then froze in the air. All of this is because a deity wearing a white divine robe walked in the distance. Chapter 7 Anti-Collector's Kaibo You are listening at NovelFull.audio A few days no see, Demo, you're bullying my son again. With a clear voice and a smile on his face, he grabbed the two of them with both hands and lifted Tolupo and a genie behind him. The man in white is the father of his body. The lord of all living beings, Gaibo. With the arrival of Kasayapa, the confident Tarupa became bolder. He peered out from behind his father to observe Daramat's reaction, only to find that the giant sword in the air had disappeared at some point. Tulupo was originally showing a good expression of watching the play, but was surprised to find that Daramo was actually hesitant. Hello, Kasayapa. Wishing you a bright future as the great Brahman. Daraima seemed to have changed his personality, his tone became gentle, and he even turned his body and took the initiative to bow to Kasayapa. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Tolupo looked at the god of justice. Surprisingly, he had an ordinary face with a respectful expression on it. Tolupo instantly thought that the Daramo he encountered was someone who had changed and played tricks on him, because Daramo's situation was simply unbelievable to him. The gods are all incredibly beautiful, incarnations of various rules. How could they grow so ordinary, 
and Daramar is the god of justice, whose priesthood represents all their principles. How can justice possibly yield? Ah! It's boring, but Kasayapa shook his head, seeming regretful. He looked at Daramo across from him with a gloomy expression on his face and said, They all say that the power of the Dharma can break through all the Maya. I still want to compete with you. Why don't you stop fighting? Kasayapa has always been regarded by the gods as a Maya master, and it is inevitable that he is curious about the power of the Dharma that claims to break through Maya. Not to mention anything else, after witnessing his own power as a Kasayapa Maya, he was also curious about what kind of power of the Dharma could break his father's power of creating things based on illusion. However, this is not what he is most curious about. The most curious thing about Tulupo is his elder brother, Hercules slash Earth Keeper. Tulio has told him that this method has indeed worked. As long as it is in the name of Kasayapa, one can procrastinate in front of Doraima. Although he has used it and the effect is immediate, he still can't figure out the reason. Immediately after, Daramo said something that almost made him think he had heard it wrong. My righteous power cannot be applied to someone like you, so naturally it is not your opponent. Daramo said such words sincerely, which caused Taruba to curse in her heart. How could you, with your thick eyebrows and big eyes, flatter so well? Tolupo and Ajini were stunned, feeling for the first time that they seemed to underestimate this father who never kept his composure. In theory, shouldn't a god like Doraima hate a god like his own father the most? Why does Doraima actually have great respect for Kasayapa? He did not believe that Doraima would succumb to the power or fame of the Kasayapa. You should know that Kayabo is not only frivolous and uses the power of Maya to play tricks on people, but also has a charming personality. Married his first daughter, Titi, and gave birth to a giant. Then he married Tanu, the second daughter of Dasha, and gave birth to the god of war. Married the third daughter of Dasha, Aditi, and gave birth to several natural, meteorological, and starry gods, including Tulupo. Married the fourth daughter of Dasha, Jayachula, and gave birth to the python god with a human head and a snake body. Then last time, she married the fifth daughter of Dasha, Tunu. It is said that Tunu's aunt has already given birth to a giant egg. In short, this father is a demon in the heart of Tulu. When I see a sister in law grow up, I marry one, and when I see one, I marry one. The current five are far from over. He had a premonition that it was still a long time ago. After all, his maternal grandfather Dasha had fifty daughters and thirty point five unmarried, which was enough for his father to collect his sister. In law, he once maliciously thought that others calling Kayabo the creator would not be a mockery of his ability to create races. After all, the five tribes that his five wives are expected to give birth to now not to mention the many lives he has created using the power of Maya and nature. Even a few hundred years ago, even monsters came to Ghana Mountain to find Jiebo as their father. Thinking of her aunt, a thought suddenly flashed through Tulupa's heart. He remembered that Daramo also married his grandfather's ten daughters. These ten daughters were still addicted to practice in Kasayapa and did not notice that they got married during a period when their sister in. Law grew up. So Daramo has cut off ten goddesses, otherwise now there would be ten more mothers of Tarupa. Kayabo gave birth to the eldest son of the fourth generation of the divine race, Haranayaksha, and also gave birth to the divine, but Daramoth has not yet had any offspring. Shouldn't it be that my father, who is proficient in curses and life creation, is not angry that his sister in law was robbed? Curse Daramoth. He seemed to have discovered the reason why Daraima was so respectful to Kaba. So, Daramo may be out of mutual pity between the brother. In. Law. Or perhaps you want to learn from Kayabo about the issue of offspring. Perhaps it was because he was ashamed of interrupting his sister. In. Law's collection process by prying into his brother's destined wife. Most likely, it was pinched by a curse from Kayabo. Pop. Jiebo slapped the head of Tulupo then hooked his hand around his head and walked forward. Let's go. Tolu, Azini, 
stop looking and go home quickly. For some reason, he suddenly wanted to pat the child's head. Deramo also stopped over there, his eyes behind his head opened, his eyes shining brightly as he scanned the surroundings before closing and continuing to leave. I don't know why, he seemed to feel a wave of malice just now. Tolupo and Ajini followed in the footsteps of Geibo towards their home. Perhaps afraid of too many people rushing up to embrace their thighs, Kayabo seemed to have used the power of Maya to cover up the traces of himself and others. To put it bluntly, on Mount Ghana, Kasayapa calls out for a child, and half of the mountain's deities call back their father. Along the way, many gods seem to have not seen them, but they were not simply invisible. On the way, if you are about to collide, you will politely turn aside and make way for the road on the opposite side, without realizing what you have done. At this moment, he found himself unable to remember the way Deramot turned around, he had completely forgotten. He was greatly surprised in his heart, and with the abilities of Deramoth and Kayabo, they combined to become assassins. Who could escape their hands? The world originates from Van Gogh's creation, it is just a stream of light on soap bubbles, and the so dot called Maya is the magical power that shapes soap bubbles. Boosting her spirits, Tolupo carefully observed and did not miss any opportunity to study the application of the power of Maya. But he didn't make any discoveries, he didn't know how Kayabo started or how he controlled it. Out of his previous habit of studying the world, he came to this world and tirelessly studied various classics, hoping to understand the world from them. But perhaps due to differences in philosophical ideas in his mind, he has not made much progress in this area. The use of the power of Maya and the effectiveness of ritual rituals make him a scumbag compared to the Ajinis around him. After all, compared to Kasayapa's methods, he is simply using Maya to shape himself into a big stick and smash people. Father, why did you come back this time? Agni curiously asked Kasayapa, who loved asceticism and philosophy the most. With so many children, every child cherished the opportunity to be with him. Ah! Kasayapa chuckled awkwardly twice. Isn't this a monster harming the world, so I'm ready to come out and take a walk and eliminate the monster. The casually fabricated words attracted the admiration of the Ajini, and Kayabo also touched Ajini's head somewhat unnaturally. He had not yet comforted the child. Tolupo rolled his eyes aside, he couldn't believe the words for ten thousand. If he were to speak, the most likely thing would be that Aunt Vinata had reached adulthood, so Kaibo hurriedly ran back to avoid being stolen by someone who was learning to grind. As for the monsters, Brahma was trapped by his youngest son and ran into the chaos. If Brahma does not come out, the monsters will never be completely eradicated. Thinking of this, Tolu couldn't help but give a sigh of relief in her heart. Brahma's distractions will not be eliminated, and monsters will not be extinguished. And Brahma's miscellaneous thoughts involve ethics and cannot be dispelled. Brahma fell in love with his daughter, how can we solve this? We can't let them get married. Jiebo is already shameless enough, but the Creator God is so disgusting. This terrible mythological world will eventually end. Chapter 8 Living in a cave in Indian mythology is not a problem, right? You are listening at NovelFull.audio On the way, there was no idle time either. Kasayapa and Achini were discussing a philosophical issue, and Drupo listened for a few words. The world first existed. The heavens first existed. Who can know? Agni first asked the question. The heavens refer to the gods. At this moment, Tolupo could still understand that a genie was asking whether the creation of the world came from the gods, and whether the gods had the spirit first or the material first and then created the gods. Nothing is neither existence nor existence, Kayabo answered. From emptiness to existence, is there a return to nothingness? Ajani began to probe and answer. Kasayapa wanted to give a few more words of advice, but considering the age of Agni, he finally shook his head. At this moment, Tolupo no longer wanted to think along with their train of thought, because she was afraid that she might think wrong. 
Although this kind of logical debate is very simple, they insist on circling around a few times, as if it seems too advanced. When she didn't think with her brain, Tolupo suddenly realized that she was taking the wrong path. He reacted and stopped Gaibo. I spoke up and asked. Wait, you're going in the wrong direction. Father, isn't this the direction to go home? Now the Jia Yibo family is located in a magnificent golden palace northeast of Mount Ghana. This is not towards the northeast of Mount Ghana, but towards the northwest. Isn't that right? Isn't this the direction to your house? Kasayapa looked curiously left and right, then reached out a little, and a cave in the northwest of Mount Kana suddenly shone brightly. That is where Tolupo currently resides. That's my home, not the Golden Palace. Tolupo was speechless and had agreed on how to get home to his place of residence. He now felt quite ashamed to take his parents to visit his room. Don't you, as a father, care about how your son's life is when you move out alone? Kasayapa's face showed a benevolent and disobedient smile, which made Tolupo feel nauseous and nauseous. If you don't want to go home and face the Shura field, just say it out loud and pretend to be filial to your father and son. However, even Agni, who had never seen his face before, was about to see a small star in his eyes. He considered that Kasayapa liked to walk alone and practice asceticism, and was already thinking in his heart whether he wanted to move out and live. Tolu, you moved out a while ago. Let me also see if your place is good. Agni jumped with joy, his eyes full of exploration, as if a child was going to a secret base on a friend's tree. Although he may be a younger brother, in reality, due to psychological factors, he is more of an elder brother. Although Mount Ghana is a sacred mountain inhabited by divine beings, it does not mean that it is so peaceful. Jiebo has too many wives, and each wife's children naturally form their own faction. The water god Faluna, the day god Ahe, the mighty god Tora, the wind god Falu, the fire god Ajini, and the north star Tarupa are the siblings who form a group. As a father, Kayabo is unreliable, as a mother, Titi has a soft personality, as the eldest craftsman god, Tashido, is a otaku, and Mitra is a good old man who has not yet found a priest. These brothers always have conflicts with the Shiro brothers born to other ants, and it's all thanks to the younger brother, Tarubo, to stand up for them. As for Indra, that guy has a bold and fearless personality, and every day he is either on the road to fighting or finding people to share wine with. He can get in on either side. Looking at the young man's gaze, Tolupo couldn't bear to refuse. All right, go. Tolupo helplessly led the way ahead and led the two towards her own home. Or rather, heading towards the dojo slash cave. Not long after, the two were led to the cave of Tolupo. Upon reaching this point, a thin mist shrouded the area. Tolupo waved to dispel the mist, and a fairy cave appeared in front of her. A waterfall hangs out from the mountaintop, and within the waterfall, a finger-like stone cliff extends out. The spiritual cliff slants out of the waterfall, and the waterfall separates from it without any water flowing onto it. Stepping on the cliff, the surface is not moist, but covered with dense moss. The cliff is covered with orchids, and there is a thin path in the middle that is rarely walked by people. The mist in the mountains is condensed into dewdrops by the rocks on the back of the Ling Cliff, dripping into the small rock pool below, accumulating and then flowing into the deep pool below. Entering from Lingya, he soon arrived at the entrance of an arched cave. Covering the entrance was a bronze gate with unique symbols specially made old by him. Tuolupo pinched her hands and exerted a divine power. The door opened and the three of them stepped in. To their surprise, the thick mountain walls seemed to be transparent, and the outside sky could also penetrate into them. The space inside the cave was wide, bright and dry. At the beginning, there is a terrace, followed by a stone slab bridge, and below the bridge is a pool full of pavilions and lotus flowers. After walking over the stone bridge, I finally stepped into this world. Inside, it didn't look like a cave, but rather like a forest with various fairy trees and lush bamboo groves. 
Ajinai chose a circular grass mat on the ground and sat down, looking at the few beds with only various stones inside. He couldn't help but sigh. Brother, you're still so young. Why do you just learn from those bitter cultivators and immortals, and turn yourself into a bitter bamboo forest? And use these stones as tools. A genie pointed to various items of jade and looked at the Dharma Buddha with pity. The immortals mentioned by a genie are different from those in China. The immortals he referred to were Indian immortals, referring to those who exiled themselves to gain knowledge and the power of nature. They usually enlighten themselves and their disciples through asceticism, meditation, and yoga, and their skilled attack method was cursing. You don't understand. Come and taste the pear and bamboo fruits here, they are carefully planted by me. Tulupo brought out a plate of pears like fruits from a jade plate and placed them in front of them. Have you seen that bamboo forest? I have carefully cultivated it. This fruit blooms and bears fruit every thousand years, and it will take another thousand years to mature. This is still the first batch of fruits. Isn't this fruit that can be produced in fifty years? Do I remember it was brought back by my younger brother thousands of years ago? A genie took a few bites and after finishing, looked at the Tulupo who was looking at him and praised him. Delicious is delicious, that's why do you have to turn a fifty-year-old fruit into a three-thousand-year-old one before it matures once? You don't understand. Looking at his silly gaze, Tulupo gritted her teeth and said something. Over there, Kasayapa casually ate the fruit while his eyes scrutinized the various peculiar symbols inside. He is also a person who often practices hard work, and he doesn't think much about the environment, but he is very interested in some symbols inside. Is this pattern very interesting? Where did you find it from? Is it a new idea from a certain immortal? Jia Yebwa pointed to a Tai Chi diagram and asked. This was taught by a great immortal in my dream. Tolupo spoke up and answered. Well, do you know which immortal it is? I'll go and discuss it with him then. As Kasayapa asked, he was still enthusiastically simulating the shape in his hand, indicating that he was indeed very interested. The immortal did not mention his name. What a pity. Kasayapa shook his head. In the future, if you dream of encountering that great immortal again, remember to ask his name, the place of cultivation, or invite him to come to Ghana Mountain. You should cherish the opportunity, look at this symbol, he must also be a great saint. Kasayapa teaches the Dharma Buddha. Yes. The child remembers. Tulupo agreed in her mouth, but couldn't help but smile with disappointment on her face, without explaining anything. This dream should not have a chance to be fulfilled. Chapter 9 The Creator God Who Was Tricked by the Bear Child You are listening at NovelFull.audio Seeing that Kasayapa was still discussing the philosophy of these patterns and patterns with him, Tulupo quickly spoke up about the matter. Father, do you think this disaster of demons and monsters will end immediately as Brahma returns from chaos? That's all that Turupa is thinking about now. His addition of a point ring indicates that he is currently in the midst of a demon calamity. According to the rules, I always add attribute points to myself at every moment. After this disaster, I have to add a lot of attribute points to myself. When the prompt first sounded, he thought the system was active and desperately killed a bunch of monsters. Unfortunately, there was no experience gained or equipment dropped. Previously, he only knew that demons and monsters were born from the evil thoughts of Brahma, and did not know the specific situation. Now that it's related to his possible rewards, he wants to fully understand the demon calamity. As long as the calamity of monsters passes, there should always be a settlement, and then I will know how to use this golden finger. No way. Kasayapa sighed and spoke to his two sons, the return of the great Brahman from chaos does not mean that the monsters have disappeared. Only when the great Brahman drives away his desire can he say that the calamity of monsters has a chance to be quelled. Isn't Brahma the creator? How could he produce these monsters that destroy the world? Agni was puzzled by the fact that the education he had received had always been a great and beautiful aspect of Brahma. 
However, when the gods of Mount Gana gathered last time, they said that the monsters were created by Brahma, which he couldn't understand. Kasyapa nodded, indicating that it was not like this. After thinking for a moment, he explained, the world is inherently empty. Creation is right and wrong, existence is karma. It's not that Brahma gave birth to monsters, but rather that the karma and desire of the world's birth and existence gave birth to monsters. Watching the two of them seeming to understand each other, Jiebo changed his interpretation to something they could understand. If you talk about the specific monsters that destroyed the world, then it's all caused by your grandfather's brother, the god of love Gamma. Kasayapa leisurely talked about the root cause of the matter. After being born from the golden egg, Brahma created the world and gave birth to six sons. After six sons, he gave birth to two siblings, Dasha and Palini, respectively, with his left and right thumbs. Afterwards, a beautiful goddess named Savadeli was born in her left thumb. Finally, the youngest child was born from his forehead, the goddess of love, Gamma. Kama, the god of love, carries his bow of love and has five divine arrows. Whenever he shoots the arrows, the person who is hit will develop love. At the beginning, there were only ten children born to Brahma, and the world was too lonely. Brahma demanded that his children create all things in the world. Shitsi actually created many lives. But the problem is that compared to the long lifespan of Brahma and the ten sons, all things created in the world have a short lifespan, almost dying with birth. So the ten sons began to attempt to conceive life with their divine nature, giving birth to many divinities in the world. The eldest son Maritsu gave birth to Kasyapa, the second son Alichuo gave birth to Daraima and Darchuoria, the third son, Yankiluo, gave birth to Yuduo. But their divine nurturing was too slow, and Dasha came up with a solution. He married his sister Polini and gave birth to fifty daughters in one breath. There are still many gods who have not given birth to divine sons, they just randomly pinch a few lives and complete the instructions given by Brahma as completion. This includes Gama, who created a life called Lodi with a flower he picked casually. Although Love God is named Love God and holds the power to make all beings love each other, he is only a child of a few years old and does not understand love, only pleasure. Once, Gama asked his sister Polini why she had married Dasha, and Polini said it was because of love. But when he asked Dasha, he replied that it was for the guidance of Brahma, the birth of sentient beings, and responsibility. Kama, who was infuriated, shot an arrow from his own hand towards Dasha during a time when Brahma was preaching mysteries to the children. As a result, this bow and arrow was blocked by Brahma's outstretched left hand. After being hit by an arrow, Brahma looked up towards the direction of the bow and arrow, and at that moment, he saw his daughter, Savadeli, born from his left thumb. After her younger brother shot a divine arrow, Savadeli stood in front of him, afraid that her father would blame him. At this moment, Brahma couldn't contain the birth of love, and his eyes chased after Savadeli. Shavadri also noticed Brahma's gaze. She hid in the east, with a head growing on his left side and a head growing on his right side. She hid in the west, with a head growing on his right side and a head in all four directions. Shavadri transformed into a divine bird and flew towards the sky, only to see Brahma grow a fifth head. At this moment, Daraima, who noticed Brahma's love for his daughter, stood up and struck his grandfather, the creator god Brahma, with a sword of the Dharma. Upon awakening, Brahma felt ashamed and hastily ascended into the chaos beyond the heavens. With the power of chaos, he fell into a coma to avoid making a big mistake. Although Brahma was asleep, his desires continued to invade him constantly. These desires raced through his mind, transforming into various distractions and evil thoughts projected onto the world, transforming into endless monsters. How can we survive this disaster of monsters? Tolupo scratched her head a bit. How could these Indian gods have such impure thoughts? Is the first main mission about to fail? When Brahma is awake, he will step out of the chaos to find his daughter. When Brahma falls asleep, he will have evil thoughts and give birth to monsters. 
Now a demon king needs a birth master to deal with it, which translates to what he can understand. A demon king needs a Daluo immortal to deal with it. If Brahma's evil thoughts were to arise too much, and even if Brahma himself was controlled by evil thoughts, a demon at the level of the Creator God would emerge. Do you want to be so exaggerated? I have only been born for six days and I am about to face opponents at the level of the Creator God. What should I do if the system task requires me to deal with the Creator God within six days of birth? Online waiting, urgent. After telling the story, Kasyapa looked up at the sky through the transparent mountain wall and spoke helplessly. We need Agni you, we need you to convey the situation in the world to Brahma, requesting him to be clear-headed for a moment and point us out a solution to the problem. Jiebo looked at a genie gently and asked softly. Agni, are you willing? We don't know what we need to offer as sacrifices for this sacrifice. You may have nothing to do, or you may really burn up like you worried. Are you still willing? He smiled at Ajani, gently rubbed his head, and messed up his red hair. Before a genie could speak, Gaibo spoke first. I cannot guarantee anything, but a genie, if you are unwilling, as a father, I will definitely stand in front of you. Whether it is Doraima, Dasha, or even my father Maritsu, I will stand in front of you and protect you until the last moment of my life. Now, you can tell me your answer. Chapter 10 Composition and Appearance of the World You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. What? How could there be danger? Tolupa was shocked. Do he remember hearing the names of Fayu and his companions in some mythology? On the contrary, I have never heard of my own name as a Terra. According to Kasyapa, how could there still be danger? If he knew this, he would never bring Agni back. It's just that there may be danger. Kasyapa turned his head and looked at Agni. I am willing, father. I am willing to attend the ceremony and pass the message to Brahma, Ajani stood up and replied. Are you sure? You may disappear. Kasyapa asked seriously, you don't need to answer me immediately. Before preparing for the ritual, you can think carefully before agreeing to me. Don't wait any longer, father. This world is beautiful. If, I mean, if, you could sacrifice me to keep you, your mother, Tulu, and everyone alive. I am willing. A genie looked at his father and brother in front of him and spoke firmly, saying that he seemed to have grown a lot in this moment. At this moment, Tolupo raised her hand and inserted it into it. May I ask, father? Have you also asked about Phelan Na and Falyu? Tolupo looked at Gaibo. Giebo shook his head and said, Yes, I personally asked them when I was alone. They all agreed. They all agreed. A group of fools. Tolupo cursed. He is a bit annoyed. With so many gods, why should his brothers bear the danger? Why don't the hero brothers come to worship? Father, is it only possible for the three brothers of Agni and his companions to offer sacrifices? Can't you, the birth masters, contact Brahma? He doesn't know how powerful the Creator is, but he knows how powerful his own power is. Anyway, if compared to his fully stretched height of 100,000 feet, the son of his past life is in front of his current self, which is just a water walking ball that can fit him perfectly. The so dot called taking the sun and moon and shrinking a thousand mountains are verbs that describe the truth. And now, I am in the early stage of being a deity, still a young god just born six days ago, and I cannot defeat many demigods. Above him, there are also levels such as the heavenly god, the lord god, the creator god, and the creator god. I believe that as the birth master, Kasyapa will be even stronger. Can't he even connect with Brahma in chaos? Kasyapa shook his head and said, the chaos now is extremely dangerous, and even the few of us beings cannot get involved in it yet. We have tried it, and even our power will be consumed by chaos and cannot be transmitted to Brahma. It seemed that he had guessed what Tarupa was trying to say. He looked at Agni and explained, of course, Agni's strength is weak, 
but what we need is not their power level, but their power attributes. Kasayapa spread out his palm, and a sacrificial fire burned in his palm. Then, water vapor evaporated, generating wind. They formed several seeds with the earth beneath their palm, and threw them into a space, stirring it up, forming the same sacrificial fire in that space. Kasayapa joined forces and all the earth wind, water, and fire in it disappeared. He spoke up and said, this is the simplest demonstration. The earth wind, water, and fire in my hand are only the power of the Maya, and cannot awaken the original elements in chaos. Therefore, it is necessary for the Azinians to activate the corresponding elemental elements. He said in a deep voice, this is also where the danger lies for the Aginis and their companions. No one knows what will happen if they rashly guide the primitive elemental worship. It is very likely that it is like a drop of water flowing into the sea, melting away in an instant without a trace. Watching Kasayapa's demonstration, Tulupo made a mistake and couldn't even help a few birth masters. How could he quickly come up with a solution? Chaos. He can't even go up Mount Milu, Mount Shimi, how can he go to the chaos? The structure of this world is extremely simple, as far as he knows, it's like an egg pulled into two halves. The upper part is the sky, like air, covered with stars and various elemental energies. The lower part is the earth, and the egg liquid is the Aral Sea, also known as the Bitter Sea. Above it floats a world, with mountains, rivers, and oceans. The most famous mountain in the world is called Milu Mountain. It is a pillar that stands between heaven and earth, and it is said to support from the depths of the earth all the way to the empty realm where the stars do not exist. On the mountain, there is the Abhidharma pool that can clear all pollution and increase wisdom, the tree of wisdom and goodness, the worry-free tree that can wear leaves to ensure everything goes smoothly, the blessed pearl that blooms bright enough to cover the world, and various treasures that can be used to create artifacts. It perfectly matched his imagination of another mountain, and he had already prepared to conduct a three-foot search on that mountain. But he lay down for three thousand years after seeing a celestial being for the first time, because he met a monster at the foot of Mount Milu. From then on, Tolupo decided not to run to such a dangerous place as Mount Milu before she had grown into a heavenly god. Surrounding Mount Milu, the earth is divided into four parts. The original wind blows in chaos, passing through the east and then blocked by Mount Mitua, turning into rain in the south. The land of the east is called Badrashiva. Due to the influence of the primordial wind, the land, wind, water, and fire are mixed together, forming countless floating islands that undulate and drift in a semi-lunar shape. The island undulates up and down, and the sentient beings on the island collect water when it falls into the water. When the island rises to the sky, they plant grains to live on. Sometimes, various divine materials blown by the original wind may fall on these islands. The land in the west is called Jidumoro State. This continent is located on the Aral Sea, forming a circular shape. Above it is an endless desert and oasis, and no one can reach each other. Only a divine cow carrying mountains on its back can survive in the desert. All sentient beings live on the backs of enormous divine cows, grazing cows and sheep on the grasslands on their backs to obtain milk. Different divine cows produce different yields on the peaks on their backs, so every time they mate with each other, the creatures on their backs can trade supplies with each other, and even if they are lucky, they can obtain divine cow milk without aging. The land in the south is called Nanfubu Prefecture, which grows in a square shape and is almost submerged by the Aral Sea. Only a golden divine tree called Yenfu can grow in the sunken Aral Sea, so Nanfubu Prefecture is also known as Yenfu Tea World. The sentient beings of this continent all reside on the Yenfu Divine Tree, which can grow various fruits, vegetables, and fungi. They gather these fruits for life, and it is said that the Yen Fu Divine Tree sometimes produces a fruit that can grow into a world according to human thought. People who obtain this fruit can live freely in this world. The land in the north is called Beiju Lujo. This continent is square-shaped, covered with mountains, forests, and springs, and there are also heavens living in it. 
They enjoy sacrifices and give everything they want to sentient beings. Tolupo remembered that he seemed to be one of the gods in the heavens, and these group gods lived on Mount Kana in Kitakuru province. Now Boni has surrounded Mount Milu and is working hard to climb upwards. Ding! Key information collected, world map generation in progress. Ding! Data import failed, map generation failed. Tolupo looked silently at the system that reported errors again. Can you be reliable once? However, when he turned around, he still noticed a slight difference. In his field of vision, there was a small downward triangular arrow in the upper right corner. With a movement in his heart, the triangular arrow disappeared, and he silently said, Map. A picture scroll unfolded in front of me, displaying an oval-shaped small map. He looked carefully and saw that this was his small cave, wasn't it? Tulupo wanted to lift the table in her heart. My own cave is so big that I can read it all with just one glance. Why do you need to show me the map? This trash.